I flew over Gorongosa. I'm looking down and it's magnificent. There's a great lake in the center of the ecosystem. There's rivers, there's a mountain with a rainforest. And the habitat is magnificent. But from the air, I could not see a single animal. Greg's a fascinating guy. He came to Gorongosa, you know, not really having much of a background in conservation or biology. He had a background in, in human rights and in business and had a big impact on both of those worlds. In 2002, I flew to Mozambique, but the turning point happened in a neighboring country. It happened in Zambia, and I went there on safari. And there's something that happens, I think, to a lot of us who go to Africa for the first time. I felt a different sense about what it meant to be a human being on this planet. I felt I'm just one species out of millions of species, and I found that to be actually very peaceful. Because to me, it gave me a sense of belonging. But I started asking questions and thinking, because why didn't I go on safari in Mozambique? Uh, Mozambique didn't have any safari places right then. Well, why don't they have a safari industry? All the other nations in Southern Africa have billion dollar safari tourism industries. So I started doing my homework and I read about this amazing national park called Gorongosa that Mozambique had. And in the 1960s, it was one of the best national parks in all of Africa. So then I started thinking, well, whatever happened to Gorongosa? In Mozambique, following their war with Portugal for independence, a war, civil war broke out. And that war lasts from 1977 to 1992. It's estimated that more than a million people died. Gorongosa was one of the focal points of the struggle. A lot of the wildlife were killed. More than 90% 90, 90 of the wildlife were killed. Many species were brought to the brink of extinction. And that was both for food and for parts, you know, ivory, harvesting ivory and selling it and using, using the money to buy weapons. But the park itself, you know, the habitats remain relatively intact. I had learned just enough about ecology to know that if the habitat is there, you can restore the wildlife. At that time, Mozambique was the single poorest nation on earth. I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. If we revive a national park, we're going to save nature, we're going to restore an ecosystem, but we're also going to create a lot of jobs. If we were going to restore nature, we needed to know how and what and what order. Do you bring back elephants first? Do you bring back herbivores before carnivores? So we needed science to lead our efforts in conservation. What's particularly interesting about Gorongosa biologically is that this place with enormous wildlife densities had most of them you know, nearly eliminated and now is undergoing this you know, large-scale restoration effort. And you can be guided by science in conservation and restoration. I think you should be. So you can make an, you know, informed decisions about these kinds of questions. But um, in conservation biology, as a kind of academic consideration, there's a lot of focus on big general ideas you know, that we can plop down in, in different places and solve a lot of conservation problems. And I've never been persuaded that that's possible because from what I see, the work of conservation is really in devising a tailor-made set of solutions to a very particular set of problems and then working with the people in that particular place to try to hammer out agreements. You know, it's, it's like politics. We needed the, the human beings who live next to the park to benefit from the park. We spend as much money outside the border of the park as in the park. We have a farming program. We have a healthcare program. We have an education program. We're already sending young Mozambicans to different colleges in Africa, in Europe, in the United States, and they'll come home and they'll end up running this park or another park or teaching in a Mozambican university. At the end of the day, 
I believe that we can simultaneously restore and protect the biodiversity of this park and create jobs and educate a Mozambican generation of young scientists. Fundamentally, thinking like a scientist is about trying to figure out how can I produce some new knowledge. But, you know, I, I sort of think of myself as, you know, as much as being a scientist, also being, you know, a storyteller and, and you know, the teller of true stories about how nature works. You have to be able to also think about the narrative and the story that you're telling and whether it's persuasive. And I think Gorongosa has kind of done a masterful job at that. We've gained a lot of ground. Well, we did a census from the air a few months ago, and we counted 72,000 animals. So we're ready now to, to finally create that tourism industry that's gonna create 1,000 Mozambican jobs. So um, I think I'm, I know what I'm doing for the rest of my life.